MPC Studio 2 does work with Studio 1 version 6. Let's check it out. What's going on everybody? This is B Crow with X Producer B coming to you today with another video. We're going to be checking out Studio 1 version 6 with the MPC Studio uh, Mark 2. I got the thing fully working. Uh, but before we dive into that, I want to encourage you to go and support me. Uh, down below like the video subscribe to the channel i've got my support links down below the more support i get it'll help me to put these scripts out faster to maintain the ones from previous versions to get licenses and hardware and, and all of that so any little bit uh matters and if this stuff is helping you out i want you to go to support me you can buy me a coffee for as little as five dollars or you can become a patreon supporter and you'll get much more benefits as time goes on but um i just want to put this out and give it free for everybody uh, so you can have it but today we're going to be talking about the MPC Studio 2 with Studio 1 version 6. So let's get it. All right, I've got it loaded up here. I'm in Studio 1. Um, all I did was load up a basic thing and, I, and I, a basic song with a kid in it. I'll delete it so you can see from scratch. If you start a blank project, this is what it looks like. And um, as you can see, everything on the MPC Studio is lit up. Uh, which means that Studio One does have the capability to send information back to your device. And if you use the scripting, it can work very well and you can uh, make it work how you want it to make it work. But the easiest approach for me was just uh, cause it to mirror the atom closely. And it really gives you tactile control over this. So I'm just going to go through and, and load up some things, do some very basic stuff in Studio One that anybody would do if they're going to create music here. So um, I'm going to hit the browse button right here. You see it opens up the browser. And when I'm in the browse mode, I can jog, use the jog wheel to load up various different types of uh, kits, if you will. It defaults to instruments. And so I'm going to load up this little dope kit. I was playing around with it earlier. Uh, if I click the jog wheel, it loads up the kick. And then it see, I have impact here. Now you'll also see the pad colors change because it's context aware, the script is. So when it's on an impact, it'll show the colors of the pads in impact kind of giving you some tactile feedback. You also notice that when you hit it, the, the LEDs light up on the MPC studio. It's amazing, okay? Now what I can do if I wanna hide that, if I can just press this main button right here and it'll show and hide the plugin. Amazing. So now I can hide this and the full transport works. If I wanna tap a tempo, I can tap that tempo in. Dup, 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 dup. All right, now I'm playing. So the tempo right here works, time control on and off. I map the quantize to input quantize so we can make music in the same manner that you would in other software, just input quantize in a program or tap in your beats and you're good to go. And so if you press stop twice, it goes back to the stop. The play start is actually the loop on and off, which, is, which I think is pretty cool. And so what you can do with this is you can set your loop points and then turn the loop on if you want to loop it off or you can turn it off. Um, these two start and ends right here actually set the loop points. Uh, by default, it goes to the start and the end of the loop, but if you hold down shift, you can actually set the loop point. So if I wanna go to another bar, um, I can use hold down shift, use a jog wheel, go to bar five, hold down shift again and set the loop point to jog to bar five. Or if I wanna set it back, I can jog to three bars, bar three, set the end of the loop there, turn it on, now I've got a two bar loop. All right, so I can begin recording. My input quantize is on, my um, click is on. Um, I've got the record right button right here. It's already set to uh, pre-roll and that's another, that's another function that uh, I've enabled here. You can, you can toggle the pre-roll on and off. I think that's pretty cool. But by default, it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be on. So here we go, let's... All right, let's record something just to see how see how it works. One, two, ready, go. There it is. See how it's looping and I'm still gonna record it. There we go. Now you'll notice when, when I'm playing this, the pads have feedback based off of what's playing in there. So it really gives you a tactile feedback, all right? 
Uh, you can you can use the locate button to go back to zero. Um, if you hold down shift and use the locate button, it'll loop through your markers. So if you have markers in your project, you can use that. Um, I can go to the end of it, start the loop there. I can um, scroll around with the with the jog wheel by default. It will um, scroll through the tracks. Um, I'll show you that. We'll add something else here. So let's go to browse. We'll add maybe an easy kit. I don't, I don't know what this is. An easy kit. So there we go. I've got another kit in here. I can press main to hide that. And if I scroll on the jog wheel now, it now scrolls through the tracks. But you'll notice something. If you go down to the look, look on the software, the mixer is scrolling through not the not the actual console channels, but it's scrolling through the tracks that are in the track view. If you want to scroll through those, you use the plus and minus, which are like left and right. So if I go to track select and use left and right, or excuse me, plus and minus, I can scroll through the individual tracks itself. What that allows me to do is to use the touch strip to control the volume of these things. So I can, I can bring volume parameters up and down using the touch strip and scroll through like that. It's pretty cool. So now I'm in easy kit. I probably won't like this kit. Oh, by the way, in order to get to different pad banks, um, I have it run on one button right here. You hold down 16 level um, and you can select another bank. So let me go show the show the impact here. Here's if I hold that down, I can select another bank and I can bank through all of these. So if I want to play a different bank of sounds, I can go here. Here we go. One, two, ready. There it is. See, we got it going. So now I can hide that. So just an overview of some of, of, of what some of the buttons do here. Um, the full level works like you would think, full level. There is a note repeat on here. I uh, probably should go out to the regular short sounds. Let me go back to the first bank. No repeat. All right. So we have no repeat that works. That's fully functional. Pretty cool there. Um, these four buttons over here are assignable. So what, what, I like, what I like about Studio One is that it allows you to configure your controllers to have a section of it or the whole thing as user assignable. And because there's so many buttons and functions here, I wanted to leave at least four of them that you could assign to yourself. And the way you do that is just go in here to this um, and you'll see these four buttons here. And if I press them on the controller, you'll see them light up in the software and you can assign that to anything you want to do. Just right click and assign command and find a command. Maybe you just wanted to save. Um, that way. And now every time I hit this button right here, it will, it will save. All right. If I play it, I make a change. I can save it again. So it's pretty cool. Um, I encourage you to check that out. Another thing that I find useful is sometimes I just want to erase or undo. I have an undo button right here. So that undoes, undoes that, I guess undoes. Um, I also have an erase button that's down here. It will delete it. Um, we can also duplicate it. So if you press the copy button, if you want to stretch this out, you can duplicate that as much as you want. Go to the next track, duplicate that as much as you want. And I can go shift here, set my loop points to bar nine. Now I have a nine bar loop and I can, I can play it. All right. So that's that. Now let's, let's load up something that's, uh, not so, um, Let's load up something that's not an impact kit so you can see the different pad modes. Let's go to, let's go to out of here. By the way, when you're in browse, plus and minus is left and right. The jog wheel is up and down. Also sample start and sample end is also up and down. So you can scroll through there. Let's get the, uh, the VST of this. 
Well, now we have this. It's a scale, and you see that the 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 these two right here are the octaves. These are every note in between. And if you want to change the octaves, it's right here. All right. I'm just making some trash. Uh oh, I missed it. Undo. One, two, ready, go. Now remember, I can um, I can duplicate that. So let's trim it to a two-bar loop. The copy duplicates it. There we go. Go back to locate. All right, now there's there's much more this thing can do. Um, I've got it really works. If you want to know all the features, I encourage you, um, I encourage you to go and look at the videos for the um, PreSonus Atom controller because I I caused it to mirror that as much as possible. I had to change a lot of things and I had to reverse engineer their code to make this work, especially with the pad colors. Um, and the different buttons that they use are very, very different than what the NPC is. But once I got the hang of hang up, once I got the hang of it, it just flowed. Um, so I'll go through a few more features with you here before we end the video, and I'm going to release this script just a little bit later. But here we are back with the controller. Um, this button right here toggles the mixer view. This program select toggles the editor view, and you'll notice that the LEDs have feedback according to what view is active. This toggles the browser right here. Shift gives you some, some, you know, some auxiliary controls. Um, that was kind of unique to this particular controller, so I'll have to document those. Um, but I, I use it mainly for this jog wheel and some other buttons over here um, and what I programmed it to do. And so I like how you can jog around using the cursor and just kind of play from there. Um, as I said, plus and minus is left and right navigation, um, sample, Start and end are up and down for whatever view is active. So if I want to come out of there, if I'm in this view, come out of the browser view, I can go up and down in the same way that the jog wheel would go up and down. The jog wheel button press, if you're in browser view, it will load up a uh, whatever instrument, whatever you have selected, it will insert it. So I can insert vital there. If I come out of the browser view, if I come to maybe an audio track, which is what I want to do, I want to have one of these buttons um, create an audio track. I can add one here. If you add an audio track. Um, it will arm or disarm it. Now it's armed. Now it's disarmed. I don't know why it does that in Studio One. <laughs> or you can arm and disarm any other tracks too. <laughs> that makes it easy if you're tracking vocals and you have this thing up there. You can just scroll down to the track, <laughs> shift to scroll in the place where you want to start recording, arm it, and then start recording. It's going to sound horrible, but here it is. All right. <laughs> Let me not arm. Let me arm. But here it is. Okay, so pretty cool stuff, um, in, in my opinion. Let's just undo that recording. So this works, um, and this was a lot of work. Um, it took a lot of trial and error because... Every time you make a change to the script, you have to reload the program. You can't just reload a project. Um, and there is no documentation. I had to reverse engineer. Now, if you're interested in, in what I learned um, through this process, um, hit me up in the comments and we can work out something. Um, definitely, if you want me to hop on like a Zoom call with you, you know, consider signing up to the Patreon, you know, and then you can reach out to me directly. And then I'll hop on a Zoom call with you and maybe troubleshoot your own controllers with Studio One and share my knowledge that I've learned um, in reverse engineering this. Because what I found out is that it, it is very it is very capable um, in order to make any controller work. Um, as long as you know, um, 
they have have reverse engineered the controller itself. You can make pretty much any any MIDI controller do whatever you want or need it to do, um, which is a plus in my eyes, especially for this piece of software because it's very popular, it's very powerful, um, and now we can integrate pretty much whatever hardware we want to um, with it. And so, if you're from Presonus or you're on the team that development team that works on Studio One, hit your boy up. Give us some document. I don't know why you guys don't release this documentation. Just all you need to do is give us give us um, just the API reference, the host API reference, and give us the reference for the XML surface data files, the XML service file and the surface data. If you can give us references for what the attributes and options mean, you won't really need to. To, to, to support it on a large scale basis. The community will do a lot of that work for you and it will bring more users to your software. So in my eyes, it's a benefit to you because you already have it. You just haven't released it yet. But for those of you guys that are Studio One users, be on the lookout for this release coming up. Um, and if, you, if you're interested in having more of this, consider supporting me down below. The links will be in the description of this video. But that's all I got for today. Until next time, deuces. 